Okay, everybody, welcome back. We are going to go ahead and set up the camera and discuss a little bit more about camera integration and stuff like that. As you can see here, I've got a CineDrive set up with the 5X control module to make it work like the CineShooter. Plus, I've got a camera on here and I've got a slider and I've got a uh, turntable and a focus motor. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the camera set up. So I'm just going to grab this cable and uh, the USB. I'm going to connect it into the camera. The other side is already in the computer. We're going to go ahead and add a camera. I'm going to look and see if I see the camera. I do not. So there we go. Popped up. And now you can see we got a live view. OK, so over here you have your camera settings. So you can set the shutter speed. You can set the uh, ISO, picture quality, image quality, white balance, and, uh, so on and so forth. And these are all going to kind of depend on what camera that you have. Like right now, I can't control aperture on this, which would be the middle ring. And that's because I'm using a manual lens on this. It doesn't have autofocus. Uh, if you want to take a test shot, you just click the button. There's a test shot. In fact, let's go ahead and bring that down, make this a little bit more where we want it with the exposure. Test shot, okay. And you see it's out of focus. Uh, we don't have the motion control stuff set up yet, but we'll get there. Okay, so right here you see this, X1. This is exposure one. So you're gonna see down in here, we've got several different lines. In fact, let's just open that up a little bit. Here are the two test shots I took. If you're actually engaged in the shooting sequence, you'll see those images will come on here under X1. You can rename that if you want to whatever you want. Let's say exposure one. Why not? And you see it's now labeled exposure one. Now the interesting thing you can do is you can do a lot of different exposures and you can tie them to all kinds of different events. So if you want to add an exposure, you just click on the little plus and you see I have exposure two. And I can come in here and I can rename it to whatever I want. Okay, now we got exposure of one and whatever I want. So if I am going to be doing a shooting sequence, it will expose for this one and then it will do the next one. And we'll go in the order that you have them in here. Um, you can't flip your very first exposure with the others, but subsequent exposures. Let's see, another. You can change the pattern in which it captures them just by dragging them, moving them up and down in order to reposition them. But your first one has to stay your first one. To explain it here a little bit, you can delete your exposures, but you can just take them out so it's not going to do them or shoot them. You can change little colors if you want to help uh, keep things isolated. So if you're doing like a blue screen on one shot, but in camera VFX on another, uh, whatever it is that kind of helps you sort that out. Auto means that when it's time to take the image, it will immediately do so. It's not going to it's not going to require you to manually take the image. Um, this is great for time lapse, but also if you're shooting multiple frames, you're going to shoot to shoot 10 frames. Uh, you just I believe you have to hit enter in order to get it to cycle through to the next one. Uh, delay. This is going to be any kind of a delay you want between uh, well, before it takes the image. So I could put like 10 seconds up here if I want like a fogger to dissipate. And then I don't have a delay on either of these if I'm doing two more because the fog is already dissipated. Um, so that's one set. And there's other ways that you can do uh, delays in here as well. Go motion enabled. Uh, that means that when it is going to be taking a picture, it can actually move while it's taking the picture to create a little bit of a motion blur. Generally, I don't do that. Um, making of, this is something that's new. I'm not overly clear, but it seems like there's an option to have a behind the scenes camera that will uh, engage and do its thing even when, if you're not actually taking images, I guess. It's, it's interesting. I'll dig into this a little bit more and we'll talk about that more. Let's talk about composition guides real quick. So if you're in the animation page and you have over this, this will pop up and you have a lot of these different layers and I don't really know everything on any of them, but I'll be happy to dig into it, figure it out if anybody sees one that they would like to uh, have a tutorial on. But on this, generally I'll put a 16 by nine ratio mask. And as you can see here, I can turn the mask off or on and I can also increase and decrease the opacity of it. So I have an idea of what's gonna be out of frame if I do see something that I wanna to try to adjust for. You also have various framing guides that you can use over here, and those can all be adjusted over here. Um, if you go into the push-in, you can kind of punch in a little bit if you want to give yourself a little bit of safety on all ends. 
And then, of course, you know, give these horizontal offsets that you can use, or horizontal and vertical if you need to use those. Drawing layers, my understanding of this is generally used if you have, like, say you have a puppet and you're uh, moving it and you're capturing it, and you want to make it move in a very specific general direction and you're worried that you might get some wavering on that, you can draw lines on the screen and use those as references to make sure that it's going to be moving the direction that you're expecting it to, or that you're making sure that you are moving it the right direction. So you, maybe there's like a watch on its wrist and you're making sure it follows all the way around this arc completely versus maybe cutting through early. So it's just animation tools. I don't really use these much. Then we have track reads. I have no idea what that is. Uh, I can probably try and figure out. Uh, media layers. Um, this is just more of the stuff. Uh, <laughs> I get to this one. I'm not exactly sure what all this stuff is, so let's take a look. Okay, so we can change the background color. Imagine we can box things in. Change that. Scale. Yeah, I don't know. Now I kind of wish I didn't do this. Okay, there we go. <laughs> You're going to find there's a ton of things that you can do in Dragon Frame that you may or may never run into. A lot of the times, some of this stuff, I don't really run into it. Um, let's go over the structure of this. What, is that? How do you, what do you think of that? We're going to go Dragon Frame Mirror and Dragon Frame Tutorial. This is going to be your folder structure. Basically, you're going to have your first take. If I had more than one takes that I filmed, they would all be in here. Once you go in the take, you can go over to the exposures. Remember, I made exposure one another and whatever I can click on exposure one in any files that it takes it will be in there in fact let's just go ahead and do capture single frame and you'll see we're gonna run through all of these okay now if we come up here we have all three of these exposures now why do three exposures well here let's do this let's go to exposure one take this out of shooting and we're just gonna make that brighter and this one we're going to make darker or no darker now if we're going to go ahead and do it capture shoot single frame it's got the, it'll capture each exposure and you can also have events happen between exposures like little arms come in with like a uh, little green screen block or something like that there's plenty that you can do and we'll cover all of that but for the most part, this is really it with the camera. Now, in Dragon Frame 2 or, or Dragon Frame 5, you do have the ability to add extra cameras. So you go over to Scene and Cameras. And what you would do is add a camera. Now, I do not have another camera connected to this, but you would see it here, and then you would see its live view here. And then you can start linking those cameras to different movements and things. And we'll go ahead and cover all of that too. But uh, one more thing to cover, uh, go up to Dragon Frame. Go to support, go to camera support. These are all the, there's a lot of good information on it. These are all the cameras that will work and it will explain, you know, what features are and are not supported on them. Uh, but there's an enormous amount of cameras. Pretty much if you have anything made in the past like five, six years, there's, it's gonna be compatible easily. So let's go ahead and start looking at motion control stuff.